Ask the Chiropractor. Hi there, welcome to Ask the Chiropractor, your source for ultimate health, healing, chiropractic, and medical related information. I'm Dr. Adam Rodnick, a chiropractor out of Commerce Township, and I'll be your host today. We're here with our two awesome guests. We have Dr. Phil Skyton, who's a doctor of physical therapy from Plymouth Physical Therapy, and we have Dr. Blair Globerman, who is a chiropractor uh, with our practice at Rodnick Chiropractic. Welcome, guys. Thanks for, having Thanks for having us. So our topic today, uh, the main thing we want to talk about is golf. It's springtime, and people are getting out on the links, and we want to talk about some of the injuries people get in golf, ways to prevent some of the injuries, some of the proper biomechanics. And so first I want to talk to you guys about you know, your history with golf, that you play it, that you do it, but also as uh, clinicians, some of the training you guys have specifically for those type of injuries in golf. So for myself, uh, I grew up playing golf. I started probably when I could walk. I uh, grabbed a putter out of my grandpa's hand and tried. And uh, since then, it's just kind of grown. Um, I've gone through a fellowship in a applied functional science. And then I furthered that education with a functional golf specialty. Um, so, And I have been golfing for the better part of 20 years now. And I actually uh, got a couple of golf injuries uh, when I was younger. So that's what got me into chiropractic. And I'm oh, sorry. And uh, yeah, so I've been golfing for quite some time. And we try to just uh, benefit the other golfers just by educating them about low back injuries because that's the main injury you get with golf. And I make it out once or twice a year and I, I'm lucky to get a snowman every hole. <laughs> but I do know about the biomechanics. So let's talk a little about some of the things that people can do to help prevent injuries, some of the posture people normally have, and then maybe some stretches, some exercises, and things people can do at home, just from hearing our video today, um, would be awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, posture is definitely huge. Um, you know, that's one of the things that uh, we kind of touched on, but uh, you know, a, a lot of us that uh, we're, we're, I don't know, desk heroes or whatever you want to call it, we've got a desk job and we sit all day long and we end up rounding our shoulders out. Well, if you look at a lot of the golf postures, if you look at a guy like Brooks Kapka, Tiger Woods is a great example. Most of us know who he is. Um, they've got a very flat spine, and that allows their facet joints, it allows their spine to rotate in the right way. Whereas, you know, you take somebody who's a weekend golfer, um, maybe if we took a picture of your, your backswing, maybe it's not quite as far. Uh, so, you know, you lose power, you, you may end up, you know, pulling them across to the left or pushing them off to the right just because your spine can't, you know, move in the right direction and you end up using your shoulders, you end up using your, your ankles, whatever the case is. And what we see also from the pros is that all the pros, not only do they have, you know, trainers and golf coaches, but they all undergo physical therapy, chiropractic care to keep their alignment healthy, to keep their spines healthy. Uh, you know, I've, I've seen lots of pictures and images on some of my chiropractic groups of Jordan Spieth with his chiropractor on the golf course with him, you know, getting treatment or Tiger Woods getting treatment right there at the golf course. So they, they obviously um, see professionals as well as do things at home. But there's a lot of things that we can do at home uh, as beginners to stretch, to work on our posture and help prevent some injuries. Mm -hmm. So basically with golf, you uh, if you golf a lot, you get overuse injuries, so that occurs the elbow, the wrist, it could occur in the knees, the feet, pretty much anywhere in the body. So what you want to do is stretch before and after each round, so just about 5-10 minutes before the round, 5-10 minutes after the round, just kind of work out all the muscles you were using or you kind of feel tight in, and they could be anywhere from just active release or just general stretches, and we could just help you out with that. Mm -hmm. So I'll show you what uh, some of those overuse injuries, like to the wrist or elbow, uh, this is actually termed golfer's elbow or tennis elbow is on the other side. These epicondyles are basically on the side of the elbow. And from overusing these muscles here, it pulls on the tendon and causes what's called epicondylitis or tendonitis here. And often this type of injury hurts after the fact to move your wrist. Just to move your wrist up and down like this would then hurt because every time you move the wrist, you're pulling on that tendon. And sometimes this injury can take a long time for people to heal because you do use it so often, even after you're done playing golf or playing tennis, in your every, everyday life, just from shaking hands, from moving your wrist up and down. So oftentimes people could use, we, we are, encourage people to use a support, like it looks like a little headband to support that area, uh, a little strap for the epicondylitis. And then in office, we do treatment with um, with exercise, with manual therapy, but a lot of times for overuse injuries, uh, in our clinic we use a laser, 
It's low enough level laser that it doesn't cut or burn the skin, but it does penetrate the soft tissue and the deep muscle. And so what it does is increases microvascularization or tissue repair. So it decreases pain, decreases inflammation, increases healing time, and helps to promote cellular regeneration. So it's a really cool uh, modern modality that we use a lot of times for overuse type injuries. Something that I see a lot uh, you know, in, in my field is that uh, oftentimes the overuse injury happens slowly over time. So you mentioned it takes a long time to heal, and it really does. Um, you know, you may feel it as a little bit of a soreness or an irritation the first couple of, you know, rounds that you play and you just kind of play it off and, yeah, you, you know, you stretch it a little bit, you, you shake it out, you rub it, maybe grab one of those Chopat braces or whatever and that typically will help get you through the season, but then the, the cause doesn't actually get fixed. So a lot of times what we'll do is, you know, kind of like little detectives, we'll try to figure out what's, what's causing that problem and we talked about the posture. It could be the posture that causes you know a, a chain reaction from the shoulder all the way to the elbow and uh, you know fixing the root cause is really kind of where, where we'll go after uh, you know using that fu functional golf specialty we'll watch the swing we'll maybe take a videotape of it maybe pause it in different directions or uh, uh, strength test or, or manual muscle test just to kind of really figure out what's going on what's what's really causing that problem so we treat to fix the symptom but then we also treat to, to fix the cause so that maybe next season it doesn't come back and what are some of the most important stretches someone can do for, let's say, their back before a round of golf? Um, for myself, I, I'll usually start with, you know, and it sounds a little silly, I'll do almost like a jog in place, um, and then I'll do a series of lunges. You know, I want to get in all three planes of motion. I don't want to just go forward and backward. Um, you know, stretching the hamstrings is great. Um, you know, bending backwards is great for the back, and, and, you know, even bending forward can be good for the back as well. But I want to get in all three planes of motion. So I want to go forward and backward. I want to go side to side and I want to rotate as well. Um, and I have a series of lunges that I do with a golf club, sometimes weighted, sometimes non-weighted. Sometimes I'll get into balance. Sometimes I won't just kind of depending on how I feel um, or how one of my clients is feeling for that day. I may advance them a little bit further, but that, you know, five to 10 minutes or so is, is about all it takes. And would you recommend stretching after the round of golf as well? Always, always, absolutely. It's, it's similar to if you, you know, go for a long run. I mean, sometimes you're out there, if you're out there for an outing, you're out there for five and a half, six hours. You know, and uh, it's, it's interesting. I talked to somebody who works with golfers on a very regular basis, and uh, uh, he wrote a paper, and it, it was called The 3%. And it's The 3% because when you actually time how long a golfer, a professional golfer, takes a swing, it's 3% of their entire day, right? So they do other things. They walk up and down hills, they squat down to pick up a golf ball out of the hole, they pick up the pin, um, you know, they hopefully not, but they bend down to pick the ball up out of the water, whatever the case is. Um, but the actual time, you know, doing the swing is only 3%. So we have to kind of work on those other postures, those other things as well. So mimicking walking is a good way to, to start for a warm up as well. Let's look at this posture. And you know, Dr. Blair, if you could kind of walk us through this, this posture where we see the spine kind of curving the wrong way or accentuating the curvature here. So right here was the uh, lower cross syndrome, and pretty much we have uh, some really tight uh, extensors in the low back. We also have really, really weak core muscles in the front, so that's usually what occurs when that's happening. The glute muscles are also getting really weak, and then your quads are getting really strong. So that occurs when we have, let's say we're sitting really long time, for work, in the car, eating, it all comes just from posture. So it's better to stretch out the really tight muscles and then to strengthen the really weak muscles. So you just kind of want to get a healthy balance between the so two. Strengthen the core, strengthen the abdominal muscles, strengthen the glutes, but then stretch the lower back. Exactly. These muscles are going to be a little tighter. Think of if uh, you have a sports team with a bunch of weak players, what do the other people have to do? they got to pick, pick up, up their game. Mm -hmm. So these ones are going to get really tight to make up for some of the weak ones. Exactly. And he brought up that the hamstrings are going to be tight. So you always want to stretch the hamstrings before a round just because it feeds right into that posture, which and they the majority come and connect of... to the pelvis. So the issue of fibrosities are part of the pelvis here. Exactly. And this one is going to be the opposite. This is the upper cross syndrome. And so we see this just from day to day life for most people, because most people all the time are hunched forward on their phones, working at a desk. And so automatically before physical activity, they're already in the wrong position because they have certain muscles that are too tight and certain muscles that are too weak. And this is also called Tex neck. And you get rounded shoulders, the chin kind of juts out. So you can see from the picture of the image there, 
your rhomboids the right in between. The muscles get weak. Like I said, the rhomboid muscles get weak. Exactly, and then you get the traps and the levator muscles are getting really tight. Really tight in the red ones. Same yeah. thing with the pecs. So it's just kind of, those both help just around the shoulders, and you see that a lot in people's golf swings because, like you were uh, noting earlier, you want the straight spine, and right when you start to curve right at the top, right up there, it just adds a lot of extra stress on that cervical and higher thoracic uh, area. You say it's the mm -hmm. head goes down when they put the head down; they're looking too much at the ball instead of upright. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Shoulders roll forward. So this is what it looks like compared to an X-ray too. We should have a normal curvature kind of arcing backwards here. And so as we start to lose this curvature or it starts to go forward here, we're going to get, again, weak muscles here, student kind of massive muscle, round blood muscles, and then these ones are going to get really tight this way. So this person here taking golf swing is more likely to get injured or is their swing not going to be as effective on the ball as well, right? Right, right. So what are some things people can do at home to strengthen some of those muscles or what should they work on at home and then what should they work on uh, on the course or with a golf pro? Uh, so for home, uh, you know, there's a lot of, you know, talking about the core strengthening. Everybody loves doing plank, well, everybody knows about planks. Uh, some enjoy doing them, some don't. Uh, it's a static exercise and the golf swing is not a static thing, right? It's a movement, it's a rotation. You're, you're doing something on a consistent basis, albeit 3% of the time, you're still walking and doing other things as well. But if you want to really gain that strength in the core, oftentimes I'll suggest, you know, instead of just doing a, a straight plank, um, you know, moving your feet, moving your arms, going from normal plank to side plank, um, making it more dynamic, you know, so you're, you're actually moving. Um, outside of that, uh, as far as core strengthening goes, you know, it, the core could be as simple as a squat with a rotation or a lunge with a rotation. Um, golf is a rotation dominant sport, much like tennis or, or baseball or hockey for that matter. And one sided, right? And, and you're not going typically lefty one, one side, round yeah. and righty with the next yeah, round, yeah. right? I mean, some might putt lefty and, and hit righty, but you know, putting's not quite as, as high velocity. Um, you know, so oftentimes that's, that's where I'll go or I'll begin is kind of start with the plank and then develop it into more of a dynamic uh, plank, a moving plank. Um, for home, uh, that could be, you know, a lot of stretching. Um, the, the program to kind of work on the core and, and the stretching is, is you know, um, together. The Superman exercises yeah. as well? Yeah, that would be great. And again, the same thing. You, you might start there and then start swimming Cross, the hands. Cross, crawl, Superman, all yeah, that kind of stuff could, with yeah, the Yeah, you legs. could do the crab walk or something like that, really where you're just kind of changing it up. So your body's not getting used to one thing all the time. Similar to the postural stuff, right? If we're so used to being forward and hunched over for long periods of time, our body will adapt. Well, if we do the exercises that counteract that, we want to do them regularly, but we also want to change it up a little bit. So a lot of times, the, you know, the, the functional golf program that I'll do, I might start with, uh, you know, static exercise, but I quickly move it into that rotational component or that side, side kind of component, really to kind of advance the program so that the person is is always changing instead of just doing the same thing over and over and over again because that could be what got them to me in the first place. And then so we talked about some of the overuse injuries that happen little by little but what about some of the bigger injuries that we may see? I'm, I'm sure you guys have noticed sometimes we see a golfer come in they can barely move they can barely stand up they have pain radiating down their legs so let's talk about some of the injuries that we actually see f directly from golf. So for golf you want to get a lot of torque through the uh, swing and that occurs through rotation, like you were saying. But the lumbar spine doesn't really rotate too much. That's what the thoracic spine's for. So it tries to compensate a little bit and the muscles surrounding the spine kind of just get strained. And you want to you heat the muscles pretty much after each round just to kind of loosen them up, help them out a little bit. But you also get uh, disc injuries, some stenosis in the lumbar spine. It occurs up top also in the cervical spine, but the majority of golf-related injuries occurs in the low back. So you always want to watch out for that. Keep a straight spine. You don't want to have that curve too much there or round it too much. Um, is there anything else that I missed for the uh, injury-wise? This um, is what the stenosis sort of looks like, too. And this exactly. is more for older golfers who already may have some stenosis, which is where it's narrowing of the canal. Once that happens, it's a lot easier for you to cause impingement or irritation to uh, the ventral part of the spinal cord, which is the front of the spinal cord, or the nerve roots where they come out. So this is sort of what stenosis would look like here. This is some degenerative changes or arthritic changes in the posterior elements back here. The disc is pushing out this way and there's just less room for the cord to come out. So if this person is golfing and doing excessive swinging and turning, they're gonna have a much more likely chance to have uh, an injury 
where even though they already had a condition, they may now have an injury where they come in to, to see us and their back is killing them or uh, they have radiating pain down the legs because these nerves here are irritated. This is basically a top view. We're looking like a slice from up and down where this is the back, the part of the spine you would feel. This is the intervertebral disc. This is the hard layer or annulus fibrosa on the outside. And this is called the nucleus palposus. So that's kind of the jelly or the, the fluid material inside of the disc. So I had a, a client uh, recently actually come to me with a, a left shoulder issue. And, uh, you know, going through the history and everything, he had told me that uh, he had a neck problem. And the neck problem had been going on and off, you know, because he was doing a lot of heavy lifting. And this is, he's a big dude. And um, he said, I, I took some video, because usually when I'm on the phone with him, I say, get some video of your swing if you can, and bring it with you so that I don't have to do it in the clinic. And uh, he, he showed me the video. And very classic, you know, overswing. Just way too much trying to get, uh, you know, the extra five yards out of his drive. Well, he came in, his left shoulder on the posterior aspect was really painful, tender to the touch. And, you know, over the course of the, the time with him, it was that overswinging that was happening. So a lot of times what we'll see in, in our population is, is the, the people that are only out a couple of times a year. And yeah, they want, you know, they Baseball get to that, swing, happy yeah, they, more, they get to that outing That's and they say, me. you know what, I'm going to win the longest drive today. And they put the ball down and they swing real hard and oh, my back or oh, my shoulder. And, uh, you know, for him, it ended up being the lack of thoracic spine mobility, um, causing his neck injury from the previous year. And then the neck injury not actually getting fixed because he didn't do what he was told to do. Um, ended up causing his left shoulder because his body's going to do the swing no matter what happens. And if his neck hurts, he's going to figure out, his body's going to subconsciously figure out another way to do it. And when the shoulders are rolled forward or there's impingement or irritation on the nerves of the neck, we're going to get less blood supply to the shoulder girdle too, which is going to leave us more susceptible to an actual shoulder injury. Even though someone may complain of shoulder pain or something down the arm, it oftentimes could be coming from the neck, and then, or it could have started from the neck, like you said, and then because we're not getting as much nerve supply, blood supply to the shoulder girdle, now we're more likely to tear one of the rotator cuff muscles or, or have uh, tendinitis or tendinosis in some of those tendons as well. Absolutely. And then I want to show also this muscle here. I want to see what you guys think as far as uh, its involvement in golf and as far as uh, injuries we may see with golf as well. So this is the iliopsoas muscle here. And oftentimes we see golfers come in who complain of pain in their lower back around this area here, which is called the sacroiliac joint. It's right where your tailbone or sacrum meets the pelvis. Yeah, so uh, pretty much in the golf swing, a lot of uh, younger golfers or more inexperienced golfers think you get uh, power by swaying back and forth, but that's just not true. You get the power by shifting the pelvic girdle back and forth. And when that happens, uh, it's tough to describe right now, but Basically, one end or one half of the pelvic girdle is moving back while the other is going forward, and then you're just transferring the energy to the other side by moving uh, just slightly, torquing your body closer towards the ball. And that is just going to bring some extra stress onto the SI joints. Usually, it's going to occur on the uh, side you're swinging into. So if you're a righty, you're swinging into the left side. It's going to bring a little pain on the uh, lower left side of your back, a little bit extra. And then often, again, if you're an older golfer, you may already have degenerative changes in that joint. Now, if you already have degenerative changes, you're much more likely to, again, feel soreness, stiffness, or injury after strenuous activity. Yeah, and those are the... movement and motion like that. Those are the folks that we'd see, you know, the first couple of swings are a little rough, and then they're good through the round, and then the next day, that evening, they go to get up out of their chair, and it's just like... Ooh, they just and they can't. show up to our office... Monday morning and just exactly. they can't move at all, right? Yep. So especially, you know, the stretching, the preparing is much more important. Not much more important. It's important for everybody. But for an older golfer, it's definitely really important for them to stretch because when you already have some degenerative changes, you may be more susceptible to an injury of sorts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what are some other things that uh, would you say people can do at home as far as, you know, seeing a golf pro, what is the difference between a golf pro doing an analysis of a swing compared to a medical professional like yourselves doing an analysis of, analysis of a swing? So something that we would do is instead of analyzing the swing, you know, I say I always want to see the swing because sometimes it, like that, that client that I recently had, that gives me an idea of what's going on during the swing. But I, I want to see how the body moves and I want to see how the body moves outside of just the swing. 
I want to see them touch their toes. I want to see them bend backwards. I want to see them rotate, move side to side. I want to test their strength. Um, and I kind of use a, a mixture of, um, you know, what I've learned from TPI, the Titles Performance Institute, and things that I, I've learned on my own through the FGS program is that I'm trying to test everything together so that I know exactly what's going on with the human body. Right? My goal is to make it so that their body can swing the best way that it needs to swing, even though they may look like a Charles Barkley or a Jim Furyk, and they want to look like Roy McIlroy, it's just not going to happen. You know, we've all got our right, own right, one right. true swing, and we want to make sure they can do that. So, uh, you know, as far as the testing That's goes, it's interesting to hear. It's, it's not different. that there's one true swing. You have yeah. to have the one for your body. That's exactly. Going to be the best for your mechanics. And any swing can work. I mean, Jim Furyk's got a major. Maybe he's got more than one. But he's got two. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, you can you can do pretty well. I mean, he shot a 59 last year. So it's like a pitcher with two pitches or something like that. Yeah. A, yeah, that's possible. And so, how about somebody who has had prior injuries? Like, let's say someone like Tiger Woods who's had four back surgeries to bounce back and and make a comeback like that. How much? Uh, work is involved from a biomechanics and you know physical standpoint for someone like that well it also depends on how severe the back injury is if on tigers in tiger's case like he was a very severe case luckily he made it out to the other side very well but a lot of people won't be that lucky you might just have pain reminiscent from years past that's just going to keep lingering or you know it could just kind of clear up in a couple of uh weeks maybe a year but usually you just you want to keep stretching no matter what get heat on, the, on a tight muscle, and then just kind of, in your free time, just kind of swing back and forth. It's always good just to kind of keep that plane uh, in your head, just keep that mind-muscle memory going. And so when is it time to seek professional help compared to, you know, someone went golfing, they were a little sore, they went in the hot tub, okay, they felt okay the next morning, compared to someone who, you know, I just, it's still bothering a little bit. When is it time to see the chiropractor, to see the physical therapist, would you guys say? As far as I, golf. I would say it's, it's always sooner rather than later. Um, you know, we talked early on about how these overuse injuries, they start as a little something. They're really not much. Uh, but you keep doing the swing, you keep doing the activity that's causing the problem. And, and the longer you do that, the worse off it gets. You know, oftentimes I'll have patients ask me, well, how long is this going to take to get better? Well, it's been going on for you know, 10 years on and off. So it's not going to get better tomorrow. We always get that question. That yeah. happens all the time. And they want you to say like, you know, 12 days, exactly, right, on the dot. Right, right. You know, it depends how they respond. Hopefully they respond well, and we'll get more of an impression of how long it's going to take as we're going than if we just take a shot in the dark at the beginning. Exactly. You know, we want to be able, we would love to be able to tell them it will be exactly two weeks, be exactly a month. Yeah. You know, but unfortunately, the human body adapts and changes, and we have to kind of see how the body is responding. Absolutely. So I would say always sooner rather than later. For sure. So other than looking at like a patient's swing, how else can you get to know how well their body's working, anything like that? Um, you know, I might use a, a full functional movement screen. Um, you know, and, and <laughs> there's a, a real prominent guy that I've, I've uh, trained under. He says the test is the exercise and the exercise is the test. So a lot of times what I may do is have them, you know, lunge forward with their arms overhead and bend backwards with their arms down below um, and just see what they've got. They okay. may be testing their hamstring, but just the quality of how they move during some of these specific functional exercises or movements are okay. will give me an idea. Maybe the right leg's a little bit tighter than the left leg. It's a nice little uh, baseline to go off of yeah. to see what you need to do with them. Yeah. yeah. And often we'll take radiographs. So we have in our office digital motion x-ray. So we can see how, let's say, a neck or shoulder is moving in a video x-ray, which is really cool. It's really effective. Uh, we also do a, a digital laser to, to scan the bottom of the feet to check the topography, the depth of the arches in the feet. And uh, if we look up here again, what we can see is oftentimes if the body is in a state of pronation or supination where the, the ankles are turned in, the pelvis will be unlevel. So we can tell how this body is going to perform differently in sports on the golf course than, than a body that may be exactly the opposite way where the ankle may be turned this way. But you get that a lot in golf, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for a righty, you may be supinated in, in your backswing, uh, but when in your really actually trying to gain power, you actually want to be pronated because that allows your muscles to have the appropriate potential energy or stretch so that when they contract, they have the best possible chance to contract the right way. And so often if we see certain things like this, uh, we may recommend like a custom orthotic specifically for golf that uh, we have certain products that are 
proven to reduce fatigue or elongate the drive. So there's certain things like that people could do to help prevent injury and uh, you know reduce fatigue as well. Okay. And then we do see some of these overuse injuries, sort of like like plantar fasciitis or again tendonitis. You know these connective tissues here can get really tight. And so, like I said, we can do manual therapy. There's a lot of modalities we can do. We talked about the, the cold laser. And with something like that, you see the tissue itself is inflamed. And the laser promotes cellular regeneration and can kind of reduce some of that inflammation and increase the healing time. So what we do is the first time someone comes into our office, it's a much longer uh, evaluation process. We want to do a full biomechanical assessment and see exactly what their problems are, what their body's doing, what it's not doing, what we can do to get them better. And so there'll be some testing, some orthopedic tests, some diagnostics. But once someone is an established patient in our office and they have you know, a little flare-up happen or a new condition or injury, we take walk-ins anytime, so it makes it really easy for them to come in after they just played you know, 36 holes of golf the day before on a Sunday. They can pop in Monday morning. We can do an adjustment. We can do laser. We can do you know, some modalities with them uh, to make it really easy for them to recover. Which golf actually puts a lot of compression on the spine as well. So if you have a disc injury, it's always good to decompress the spine after you know each round or practice or hitting at the range. So we also offer that at the office as well. So, so thank you guys so much for joining us today. Again, we have Dr. Phil Skyton, who's the doctor of physical therapy with Plymouth Physical Therapy in White Lake. Dr. Blair Globerman, who is a DC, a chiropractor, uh, with us at Rodnick Chiropractic. And myself, Dr. Adam Rodnick, uh, I'm out of Commerce Township, and remember to stretch, remember to have fun, stay safe out there, and uh, hit them straight. Thanks for having us.